Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our Max Difficulty Achievement Run. Today's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. We're starting over here on Rikazon where we're going to put in a couple of natural gas generators. I'm not 100% convinced this is where they're going to stay, but it'd be really great to have a better source of power other than the wheels and the little bit of hydrogen that we're siphoning off from the slug plugs and the electrolyzer that I put in here. Unfortunately, that hydrogen generator does not seem to be using all the power that it can, and we're a little backed up here inside the pipes. That's not too big of a deal, considering we're sort of starting a spine here. So if I just move where this hydrogen generator is, or connect it to the spine, it'll just be more power for both circuits. Because right now, we have two independent circuits. One here for the main colony area, and one what's going to be eventually our sort of industrial area. And I don't want to put it right here because eventually we're going to tame this cobalt volcano and I'm going to need a little bit of extra room for where the steam turbine is going. But I think we might be able to squeeze that hydrogen generator in here. But it is going to take another pretty big run of this hydrogen line. Speaking of which, why isn't this insulated? How hot is this hydrogen? Ah, oh, 26 degrees. It'll be fine. We're going to go under the cobalt volcano because we know we're going to end up using that one day. And with the infinite source of refined metal on this planetoid, it doesn't really make sense that I'm still using two-strand wire. So that's something else I'm going to be doing in the background. Now this is obviously not a permanent or perfect setup because all the heat that these buildings are going to be generating is just going to be sort of dumped into the environment. Maybe we'll do some sort of open air cooling system instead of using a sauna. Because to be quite honest, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to tackle all three of these. I could just use one of my old school systems like I'm going to do here and just put a couple of steam turbines, fill it with some steam and be done. But it's not too often that you have three metal volcanoes all sitting side by side. So I'd really like to think of something fun to do with these. But that heat shouldn't be an issue for a very long time because all the buildings here are being made out of gold or gold amalgam. And it's still pretty chilly here. Connect these hydrogen generators to the spine and then make sure we automate both the hydrogen generators and the natural gas generators. Although it's going to be a little while because we only have four duplicates on this planetoid. So duplicate labor is at a premium. But at the minimum, this is really going to help with the power situation and duplicate labor because the dupes will no longer have to run on the wheels. Even though we are taming the plug slugs and they do provide 1600 watts each plug slug, but that's only at night. We'll try to come back here after we finished up some of this work. But for now, we're heading back to our main planetoid of Toxedo. Last you remember, we had knocked out three plants as far as getting them to produce a mutated seed. And for what we have on hand, right now I think I'm going to try to do the sleet wheat next. And it shouldn't be too bad, although there's not a lot of natural radiation inside this farm, adding a wheeze wart might be just what the doctor ordered. The water situation is doing a lot better. This water is now sitting at around 30 degrees. And we have this cool salt sus geyser active and it's not going dormant again for another 43 cycles. So it's going to help a lot, which that reminded me right now, every little bit of brine is being siphoned out after it gets desalinated and heading right to this tank. Well, being that this tank is still pretty empty, it kind of helps with the thermals here, but it'd be really nice if I could get some of this brine to back up. And that way it would do a better job of combating the heat being caused by all the nuclear sauna and hot salt water coming into this tank from this geyser right here that is also active. And as luck would have it, this one is also active at least for the next 31 cycles. But this water here goes directly into our nuclear sauna coolant tanks. Also on the agenda is I want to improve this coolant line by replacing all this salt water with super coolant because I believe the improvements with the super coolant would sort of fix this problem, you know, forever. And thanks to our wonderful new slicksters producing all that yummy oil, we're actually ready with a little bit of petroleum. Right now we have about 35 kilos in each tile. The oil refinery is doing great. As you can see, the room has natural gas in it, although it's not enough natural gas at this time to trigger this Atmos sensor and get the gas pump to start taking it out. But as you can see, super coolant is no longer dimmed out. So I'm going to start my super coolant production now. Although it looks like we're only going to be able to do one batch for now. Look, times are tough, okay? Come on, little slicksters. Make some babies. Make some more oil. You can do it. Also on the critter fund, I'm actually setting this up as a complete lobster stable. The poke sales here 
are going to be able to convert all this polluted dirt into wonderful sand. Not that we need it because we are desalinating salt water and get plenty of salt that we can crush into sand, but I figured we might as well put the poke cells to use. So we took the transformer out from over here and moved it right here. This gave us enough space to put a grooming station and a critter drop off. Now being this room is only 48 tiles, we'll only be able to hold four poke cells, but I'm still going to want to get those poke shell babies out of there somehow. And I know I can fit one conveyor loader over here, but the next conveyor loader is going to have to go outside the ranch because there is just literally nowhere else that this auto sweeper can see. But I think we can fix that by removing these ladders right here. And then all that's left to do is to make sure that we have a completed lumber drop off. Right now we have about 15 tons of lumber, which is pretty good. And we have over three tons of ethanol backed up in the tank. I'd rather the duplicates not have to manually bring it down here. Previously, we had a storage bin sitting here that the duplicates could load up all at once. Where are you bringing the lumber? Never mind. I just realized some reason it was being swept. They were bringing it to our storage here. So all the lumber that is sitting in this stable here is going to be transferred via these conveyor rails. Now, I ended up putting a nice little system here that is going to filter out every last bit of lumber. So we can go to industrial ingredient, click lumber, make sure this guy has a little bit of power. And then all the lumber is going to take this very expensive conveyor rail line all the way over to the ethanol distillery. Now, this was not a great use of metals, and I really feel bad about it. I ended up having to resort to wolframite, which is not what you want to do because this wolframite becomes really valuable in the creation of thermium later on in the game. So when I start forgetting where I put all the wolframite, please remind me that it's sitting in this conveyor rail. Speaking of which, I wonder what that color looks like. Oh, it's like a light bluish pinkish purple. Yep, that sounds about right. And then the other rail system that we're going to have to put in is making sure all the poke shell babies go somewhere. Otherwise, that stable will get cramped. The question is, what am I going to do with them? I think the best bet, because you can't really drown a poke shell, is just to drop them off on this island here. Well, they'll keep stacking up, but our duplicates will be able to come down on this ladder, throw an egg in, and then grab the poke shell whenever we need. Now, the disadvantage is... Whenever there's any adult poke cells, they're going to want to protect the eggs. So what might be better is me actually extending this system to where all the eggs come dropped off right here. We'll make sure the poke cells can't jump over. And now all the adults will be sitting on this side of the door. Our duplicates will be able to grab an egg through the door, put it in the incubator. And that way we're not constantly getting pinched whenever the duplicates have work here. Sort of like how they're going to do when I go wrangle up a few more of these. We're still going to leave some of these wild here. For what reason, I have no idea. In fact, that's probably just a waste of time by now, isn't it? So once we end up wrangling the ones we need, we'll end up calling all but, say, one. That way we do have a fresh supply of wild poke shells in case we ever need them. I really hope the slickster bug about them not consuming as much carbon dioxide anymore has sort of been fixed, because I really need them to start drinking. For those of you not aware, all of the critters that consume gas have a tendency to get a little buggy. The last thing I'd like is a sort of polluted dirt drop off. I know we're getting a lot of polluted dirt from the ethanol distillery, but we also get polluted dirt from time to time elsewhere, such as in our bathroom water sieve here. Maybe this is where I put the other poke shell. In our cold water brine tank, I have figured out a solution. I'm just going to add a hydro sensor, and that way we're not going to pump any of the water out here until it's at least three tiles high. And that should at least give us a little bit more thermal mass. I just realized I need to put another rail system in here. Completely forgot that we're not taking the larva eggs out. I cannot wait until the metal production over on Rikazon really gets kicked up. Because it has been painful this entire playthrough always being metal starved. At least this run is not going to be too long. It's literally just going to come here and drop off right here. I was over here on Rikazon checking on the progress and I noticed that Rover was no longer stuck inside the hydroponic farm. The last several times I've loaded into this game, they were sort of entombed in here, which makes me believe either I changed something or maybe a small patch hit. I don't know, but I thought Rover was entombed forever. I also noticed that we're doing really, really well on calories. So I'm considering either getting another duplicate here or just backing off the food production a little. Considering we already have this nice sort of four cot barracks, I'm not excited about grabbing another duplicate and having to modify all this. And oh my goodness, why aren't the bathrooms working? Pipe blocked. Uh, we have to get rid of this thing again. 
It had been backed up before, and that's one of the reasons why I put the electrolyzer in here. It was an easy spot to put, considering all the hydrogen that it creates can go right up here to this gas pump. Unfortunately, that electrolyzer is not using a lot of power, so we're stuck with just continuously creating this liquid reservoir until I find something else to do with all that water. It'd probably be smart to set up a spawn, but right now we just don't have the available duplicate labor. Otherwise, on Rikazan, we're getting really close to finishing up this sort of power production facility. We put the natural gas generators on a 9060 and the hydrogen generators on a 9070. That way, we don't back up too much on this hydrogen line here, which should keep it from overflowing out and then heading up. Not that it's a big deal because it eventually just vents into the vacuum of space, but it'd be good to, you know, use it. Now, right now, I don't have a better system on what to do with all this carbon dioxide, so we're going to take the easy way out and just put a high-pressure gas vent right here. We do have a lot of area where this carbon dioxide can back up. We don't have to worry about it, but it'd probably be smart to go ahead and put in a carbon skimmer now. At the minimum, would give us something else to do with all this water. Yay, more spaghetti! The good thing is this carbon skimmer is not going to need its own water sieve or anything because we have that water sieve up there and we have this wonderful line of polluted water right here. So other than this pipeline, it's not going to take too much work to get this thing online. We are going to remove the manual generators, but we're going to keep these jumbo batteries for now. I'd like to move them into an industrial sauna or something when we have a chance. But remember, you always want a little bit of extra power storage when you have plug slugs online. That way, when they do go to sleep and start sending all that power away, we have a little bit of battery threshold to put it in. I'm also improving this system here by waiting until the hydrogen backs up all the way to this point before this gas pump starts taking it. As it stands, every once in a while, it'll grab a piece of oxygen or something. So to prevent that, we're going to lower this sensor, and we also have some just-in-case gas filters in here. And I also just realized since we have this carbon skimmer in play, we don't really need this system here. Yeah, we still need some carbon dioxide so the dust caps sit in it, but we can just open it up right here. It'll give the duplicants a quicker path to get down here instead of having to go all the way around. And the carbon dioxide will just rise up to this point and any excess will fall over and get gobbled up by this carbon skimmer, which also means we're going to be able to recover all of this. This place is really starting to come together. I know it still looks like a dumpster fire, but it's working. We only have 300 kilos worth of super coolant, but I don't care. We really need to get this whole system working a little bit better. I had to turn it back on to where even if it's above 30 degrees, just go ahead and use it, and it's sitting at 43. We're down to 2 million calories because we haven't had crops growing in quite some time. So I think step one is actually emptying the line. We're just going to put a buffer tank up here and empty the entire thing right into it. I suppose I could put it here. It'd be a little bit more convenient. Let's do that. There we go. Now we can just empty everything that's coming in into the buffer tank. We're going to turn off the thermo aqua tuners for now, which this is going to be bad because these tanks are going to get very hot pretty quickly. The good thing about this method too is we're going to be able to see exactly how much super coolant we're going to need because all of that coolant is going to end up in the buffer tank. Oh, that's not good news. We're already up to 700 kilos. It looks like the entire coolant line is empty and the verdict is 940 kilos. I need one ton worth of super coolant just for this line. Oy vey. Well, we don't have one ton of super coolant. We only have 400 kilos. So that's going to have to do for now. But I'd be willing to bet that 400 kilos worth of super coolant is still a better coolant than a ton of salt water. And we're going to find out here in just a minute. I've got this little pump system set up here because this is the most disgusting bowl of spaghetti you've ever seen. It's going to have to go around and we'll just connect it right in to the line. And the super coolant is so hot, it is overheating the liquid pump, but we don't care. Well, as long as we disable auto repair, because I don't want to waste any more copper ore continuously repairing it. Come on, we only have 200 more kilos. Oh, why you dastardly little saltwater blobs. How did you get in there? It's okay. It's okay. We're okay. Just going to use our little snipper tools. We'll isolate it and plumb it out. Chances are they were stuck in the aqua tuner when we were draining the entire loop. So when we turned the aqua tuners back on, that salt water came out. And just like that, it's all gone. Nicely done. Last update on Rikazon is everything is working perfect. Our natural gas generators don't even have to work very often, and our little rooms here are full with five kilos worth of natural gas. 
They'll kick in soon because eventually we'll end up using more hydrogen than we're actually creating, and then the natural gas generators will turn on. Our carbon skimmer is installed. All the pipes are working perfect. Even this system is working pretty well. All the carbon dioxide sits at least two tiles high, which is great for the dust caps. Everything else just falls off towards the end. I suppose I need to put another deodorizer in here though. I mean, eventually I'm gonna have to get rid of all this polluted oxygen because, well, slime lung is sort of a bad thing here. Once the polluted water gets above this level here, I'm gonna be able to put a single layer of water on top of it. And that should prevent the water from off gassing. So that's one thing I'm gonna do. The other thing we have to do is get rid of all this existing polluted oxygen. I've started by just adding a whole bunch of puffs. So they'll drink the polluted oxygen and just lay down slime. And if they do it over here, the slime falls in the water. Whammo blammo, no problem anymore. Over on Varlin, much of the same. Still just digging things out slow and steady. We've got about this whole section done. We have to finish this one here. And then finally this one here. And then a giant cleanup, and we'll send these dupes on their merry way. Last thing over here on Toxedo is I've sort of had an epiphany. This cool salt suskeyser was being used in the past to help keep this salt water tank cold. Well, now that we're using super coolant, and these are still connected by metal tiles, so all the therm... Uh-oh. What happened to Colonel Sanders? Do we have a triage cot? Tell me we have a triage cot. Where's our triage cot? Oh, they must have been in this salt water that's gotten pretty hot, considering we've let this volcano just keep going and going. No big deal, we'll build an emergency triage cot. Not that I've ever had to use one in our playthroughs, but hey, there's a first time for everything. Sorry about that, buddy. No, you can't breathe. You need to get on the triage cot. Get, just get up there. You're going to be okay. There you go. Good job. Get well soon, Colonel Sanders. Anyways, as I was saying before we were rudely interrupted, we may not need more super coolant after all. Why don't I just bring this whole loop just directly down? And so the only thing it's got to keep cool is this water that we're actually using. And there should be enough thermal transfer where between the brine water and the super coolant keeping the regular water cold, that it'll keep this salt water from staying above scalding temperatures. I mean, at the minimum, it's going to save us a lot in super coolant. And we're going to be able to recapture all of these metals as well. Yay us! I know this was a bit of a shorter episode, but by the time you watch this, I've been away for about five days, and I recorded and edited this the day before I left. So even though it wasn't a very long video, at the minimum, at least you got to watch something, right? As always, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.